Let's look at a problem where we have to solve or basically fill in the blank for some of these missing spaces. Now, in order to do this, we need to know how we solve for some of these different areas. So let's take a look at this. First and foremost, how do we get net benefit? Well, net benefit is simply equal to the total benefit minus the total cost. That's net benefit. Marginal benefit is calculated by taking the change in total benefit divided by the change in the level of activity. And finally, marginal cost is simply the change in total cost divided by the change in activity. All right? So if we know these particular areas, how do we go about solving? So let's take a look at this. Let's start with this first row. Um, now, the level of activity is zero, and so uh, we're not going to have any total benefit when we don't have any activity. That's simple enough. Let's go to the next row here. Now, how would we go about solving for marginal benefit? Well, we see that by going from zero to one, the change is one, we're also going from zero to 100 as it relates to total benefit. So our marginal benefit in this case is going to be 100. What about our marginal cost? Well, again, we can look at the change in total cost divided by the change in activity. So that's going to be 50 over 1, and that's going to be 50. And then we can go ahead and solve for the net benefit, and recall that that is the total benefit minus the total cost. So 100 minus 50. Here we have a net benefit then of 50. All right, simple enough. So that's our first row. Now this gets a little more complicated. How would we go about solving for our second row? Well, first and foremost, we know that our marginal benefit is 150. And so that tells us that the total benefit must go up uh, by 150. And so in that case, if that's true, that means that this value is 250. And we also know that our net benefit is 100. So 250 minus what gives us 100, and of course we know that that is 150, and once we've put that 150 in there, now we have an opportunity to solve for our marginal cost, where we go from 50 to 150, and that is 100. And again, 50 to 150, that's 100. We're dividing by the change in activity, which is just 1. So 100 divided by 1 is 100. All right, let's take a look at our next row. We know that the net benefit is 115, and we know that the marginal cost is 160. If the marginal cost is 160, then that means our total cost must go from 150 to 310, because that is the difference that would give us a marginal cost of 160. Furthermore, we know that uh, our net benefit is 115, and we know total cost is 310, and so what then must our total benefit be? 425. Why? Because 425 minus 310 equals 115. And then, of course, if we look at the difference between 250 and 425, that gives us a marginal benefit of 175. Okay, next row. We know that total benefit is $605, and we know that marginal cost is 179. If marginal cost is 179, that means that our total cost must have gone from 310 to 489. And why is that? Because again, 489, the change uh, in total cost divided by the change in activity, um, that would be 179 divided by 1, and that's what gives us a marginal cost of 179. If we take 605 and we subtract 489, we get a value of 116 for our net benefit. And then what is our marginal benefit in this case? Uh, again, all we need to do is look at going from 425 to 605, and that is a marginal benefit of 180. All right, let's take a look at our next row where we have total cost and we have the marginal benefit. Let's start with the marginal benefit. 
We know that it's 120. So what value do we have to have here in total benefit to have marginal benefit of 120? And if you do the math, you know that that is 725. 725 minus 674 gives us a net benefit of 51. And if we want to calculate our marginal cost, that is going from 489 to 674 divided by 1, and that is a value of 185. Great. Okay, last row. We know that our marginal cost is 190, so then what must our total cost have been if our marginal cost is 190? And we see that that is 700, I'm sorry, not 700, that would be 800 and 64. That would be a value of 864 uh, to produce that next unit. Because again, by going from seven, six, 674 all the way to 864, that is a marginal cost difference of 190. What about net benefit then? Well, in this case, we would take 825 minus 864 and we see we get a value of negative 39. And in this case, our marginal benefit is 100 because we're going from 725 to 825. So that's how we'd solve a problem like this. But here's our next question. If we were to say, what then is the optimal level of activity? There are a couple of different ways of doing this. One would be to find the area where the net benefit is largest. Uh, the greatest gap between total benefit and total cost. Or you could also find the place where marginal benefit and marginal cost are equal to each other or almost equal to each other. And in both instances, we see that that is at four units of activity. Because that is where our net benefit is largest at 116, and that is where marginal benefit and marginal cost are closest to one another.